Good morning. Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Savior. What a joy it is to be together this morning as we gather for worship as God feeds us with his word this morning. Uh, A few announcements for you today. Uh, Reminder that uh, we are joining in the wonderful backpacks uh, for school kids up in the Lowell area through Central Food Ministry. So uh, if you are here in God's house this morning, there's lists on the table in the back you can pick up on the way out. Uh, If you're watching online, we'll get that information out to you soon, either on the website or in the form of an email so that you know what we're collecting. We've got a month to do that. Uh, Packing day is going to be August 23rd. If you have any questions, you can see Peggy Wang. She can help you with any financial donations for the project or if you have any questions uh, for that. I also want to tell you that we're starting a sermon series next week, a six-week sermon series, uh, journeying through the gospel accounts from Matthew chapter 14 through 18, looking at all that Jesus has done in our life. And so look for more information on that, but a a fun sermon series starting this coming, or next Sunday, uh, journeying through the gospel of Matthew. Final announcement, our... Open Arms Christian Preschool uh, is still enrolling. We have space for new students, so if you have an interest there or you know somebody who might, please direct them to Donna Wilson, our director. Have them call uh, to the preschool. Uh, We look forward to to serving as many kids as we can as they learn and as we share the love of Christ with them uh, each day as they're here also. We gather together this morning around the theme for our good as we look at what God is doing in our life today, tomorrow, each and every day. God bless you as we worship together. We join together in our morning song this morning. I invite you to stand as we join together. gather together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, Let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. 
Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join together in our psalm this morning, Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous stretch out their hands to do wrong. But those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We join together in prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our hearts and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. For the whole Christian church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For those who labor, whose, those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord, have mercy. Amen. You may be seated as we join together in our song of praise this morning, Treasured Possession. You're not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters, not ashamed to call us your own, not ashamed to bring us near to the Father, for by your blood we come to your throne. We are your treasured possession and the apple of your eye, and you have set your affairs upon us. We are your treasured possession and the apple of your eye. And we delight, we delight in your love. You're not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters, not ashamed to call us your own, not ashamed to bring us near to the Father, for by your blood we come to your throne. We are your treasured possession and the apple of your eye, and you have set your affection upon And the apple of your eye And you have set your affection upon us We are your treasured possession 
creation and the apple of your eye. And we delight, we delight in your love. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, that receiving what you have promised, we may love what you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Turn our attention to the assigned readings for this morning. The Old Testament reading comes to us from Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. It was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you. For you were the fewest of all peoples. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping an oath that he swore to your fathers that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, therefore, know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson today comes to us from Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning at the 28th verse. These uh, verses from Romans will serve as the basis for the sermon this morning as well. Romans chapter 8. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. In order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the words of our Savior in the Holy Gospel this morning. It is for us the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. 
So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out his treasure, what is old, new, and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It is our joy to confess together our common faith. Today we do so with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated as we join together in singing our sermon song, You Are Holy. Much grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, the text for our message this morning is Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter. We hear these words again. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, 
for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? It's our text this morning. Simple promise, a word of comfort, God is working in all things for our good. No exceptions in all things, no other result for our good. No one else does it. God is the one working these things. The promise is simple and comforting. For those who love God, all things work together for good. The Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit to write this simple, comforting promise, knows that we need to hear these words and hear them often. Just before this promise, earlier in chapter 8, St. Paul wrote about life being creation, groaning. As we think about that groaning creation, we've certainly seen that in the past in nature around this area, around our nation, around the world. People in southern Texas this morning are feeling the effects of that groaning as Hurricane Hannah made landfall yesterday. Paul's that, Paul says that creation is filled with pains like childbirth, where times will come when we can only pray in sobs because words can't really express our hurts and our needs. Groaning, pain, sobbing, realities that Paul expressed just before our text this morning, just before this promise. And just after this promise that God works for our good, Paul writes that we are as sheep led to be slaughtered, where life and death and demons and persecution and famine and nakedness and danger and all kinds of other mean and nasty things threaten to separate us from our God. Oh, yes, we need this promise. We need to hear that in God, all things are working together for our good. But how hard is it to believe that? The times we, we most need this promise are the times that we struggle with it the most, right? I remember several years ago thinking about just how true that is. As I thought about my cousin, her husband had just passed away, losing his battle with cancer after two years. At 43 years old, he entered into the closer presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus in heaven. But here on earth was my cousin at age 42 and her two young boys. I remember thinking at the time when I came across this verse, well, I know it would be true. And because of her faith, she knows that it would be true. This promise, though, would probably sound pretty Hollow right about now. All things? For good? How can this be good, Lord? What good is there in this? Most of us have probably experienced a similar situation to my cousin or, or know someone who has separated from a loved one by the harsh reality of death. Sudden or unexpected, young or old, it doesn't matter. When the time comes, it's hard to see anything good. It's difficult to grasp and to believe this promise. But it's not just in those extreme moments, right? We ask this question at other times as well. When do you most need this simple, comforting promise, but struggle with it the most? Is it when the scheduled oil change comes back with the $800 repair bill that you can't afford? Is it when your best friend won't talk to you because of something you've posted on social media? 
Is it when you can't understand why you get keeping, get, keep getting passed over for that promotion? Is it when your relationship with the, the one who you thought was the one doesn't work out? Is it when your child is preparing to head off to college for the first time? In just a few weeks, neither one of you know how it's going to turn out. Is it when you look at our church prayer list that you need to hear this promise? Is it when you see the images of the hurricane effects? Is it when, you, when, when every phone call and every Zoom meeting and every conversation you have seems to end up talking about COVID-19 and what's going on in the world? Is it when each new day in our nation seems to be met with more racial tension and more political accusations and more protests that often turn out to be not so peaceful? Is it when all this simply causes you to feel the weight and the trials and the hardships in your life? All things for good? How can this be good, Lord? What good is there in this? Now, I suppose we can try to explain this promise to someone struggling with it. We could tell them that things will get better. You lost your job. You'll, you'll get a better one. Things will turn out okay. I know someone who was in, in the same boat in your situation. Now they're doing fine. Don't worry. You'll find someone else. Just wait and see. I know someone who felt just like you do. But you should see them now. Soon this will be over and, and get back to normal. But are you sure those things will happen? Do you re really believe it yourself? I don't know. The reality is that people end up on streets after losing their job. People spend the rest of their lives trying to get over the loss of a loved one. Too many damaged relationships end up without reconciliation. Too much stress and pressure can lead to breakdown and, and dark places in people's lives. In the midst of those realities, it's hard to believe that God's promise is all wrapped up in making things turn out good in this life. It happens. I know it does. I've seen it. I believe it to be true. Sometimes that's the good that God does for us. But sometimes people just groan and suffer and sob. And it doesn't help to offer some platitude or some false promise to those in need. It doesn't help to go grabbing after those platitudes or false promises when we're the ones in need. So what do we do when we see all of this over here Yet our ears hear this beautiful word and promise of God. So what do we do with this simple comforting promise when it's such a struggle to believe it? Anyone remember several years ago when the magic eye puzzles became a thing? Do you remember these? They, they, they look something like this, right? A bunch of colors and shapes. I don't know how well you can see it in the back there. But you'd find these in, in the, the comic page, in the newspaper. Or you'd see it in a, a, a frame on the wall. Any Seinfeld fans would know that there was one <laughs> in the office there that he was trying to figure out. We at our house have a book. It's the, the Magic Eye book where you, there's a whole bunch of these. And you can look through. At first glance, all you see is confusion, right? There's colors and shapes and things all intertwined with one another. However, if you stare at the image just right, all of a sudden a 3D picture seems to, to bounce off of the page and you can see what's there. It rises out of the chaos of the maze of colors and shapes. And whoever you talk to, everyone's got a different method, right? How they can look at this thing and how they can figure it out. Once you figure it out, your method, it, it gets easier and easier to see the hidden picture in what looks like a nonsensical mess. When life gets confusing, just a, a, a jumble of hurt and pain, when life looks like this for you, this mess doesn't make sense, does it? Somehow we need to look at our situation just right in just the right way. Because then we'll see something rise out of the jumbled mess that is good. 
that's always good, that's for our good, no matter what's happening in our lives. St. Paul was so good at pointing, to a, pointing us to those things. He could look at the jumbled mess in life, often his own life as he sat in prison, and he could describe so accurately the groaning and the painting, the pain and the dangerous situations. But then he helps us to see what rises out of the confusion and the doubt. And what do we see? We see a cross. And we see an empty grave. Imagine a picture like this, a magic eye 3D image with the empty tomb rising out of the image. And in the background, three crosses on a hill. But in the foreground, you can't miss it. It's Jesus standing in his resurrected glory. Standing there, as our text calls him, the firstborn among many. What is for our good? What is truly good? Well, it's a Friday. It's a Friday that we call good, where the very Son of God suffers and sobs for us. A cross where the groaning and pain overwhelm even Jesus himself. So many look at that and say, how can that be good? But it is good. Because in that death, the love of God is choosing us to be his own. He's calling us to be those who love him. On Good Friday, we've been made the eternal children of God once and for all. Is that good? There's nothing better. But what else is good? What else is good a Sunday, three days later, where the very Son of God rises out of the suffering and the sobs and the pain and the death to live again? An empty tomb where groaning and pain and are overwhelmed by the power of God himself. Why is that for our good? Because in that resurrection, Jesus is glorified and God is choosing us to be glorified with him. Jesus, the firstborn from the dead. The first to conquer death by rising to life again. The firstborn from the dead of which many more will follow. Believers in Christ will rise again to eternity with him. My cousin's husband will rise again. My father and grandparents will rise again. Your loved ones will rise again. You will rise again from death one day. All who live and die in the faith will rise to eternity with Christ. Living as those who love God, we await that day of Christ's return in glory when we will rise from the dead to eternity with Christ and all this nonsensical, confusing mess of this world will be no more. Is that good? There's nothing better. But until that day of the resurrection, we know that God is working good in all things. And we can see clearly the promise. As we think about that, I, I have a little confession to make. I'm not very good at these. <laughs> I try. And I, I, I often uh, use the cross-eyed stare method. It's often I end up not really seeing the picture too much and end up seeing stars and, and the headache that comes with it. <laughs> the only reason I know there's an image in some of those pictures is that I can turn to the back of the book <laughs> and see the answers right there. I can always see it, but something is there that makes sense right there in the middle of the mess, because right there is the promise, the simple and comforting promise of God that he will work in all things for our good. When you need that promise the most, we know that's when it can be the hardest to see anything in the confusing mess called life. So St. Paul begins the promise with the words we know. We in the church know, we as believers know, we know that what's right in the middle of everything, we know Christ crucified and risen from the dead. Living in that reality, we can comfort each other with the knowledge that the Holy Spirit is in us, taking our groans and thanks to the Father in heaven as prayers for him to answer for our good. We can assure each other that because of Jesus' death and resurrection, nothing do you hear that word? Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That comfort, that assurance is exactly what St. Paul did for his followers, for his fellow believers in Rome, and for you and me as he spoke a simple, 
comforting promise. I think it'd be great that as you all leave today, I could give you a little magic eye picture that had rising out of it the empty tomb and the crosses in the background. But to be honest, I've never seen one like that. If I ever do, I'll certainly purchase it because it would be pretty cool. What I can give you, though, as we leave God's house today is this assurance. When you ask, how can this be good, Lord? You can look to the cross and you can look to Jesus' death. What good can there be in this, Lord? You can see the empty tomb and the reality of Christ's resurrection from the dead. It's there that you know that God is working in all things for your good. To him be the glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now the peace that passes all understanding. Guard our hearts and minds in our crucified and risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand as we go to the, our, the throne of our Lord's grace and mercy with our prayers this morning. We have several prayers that we're going to include in, uh, in those who are in need today. Uh, got word this morning that Amelia Mortz is not doing well, so we'll keep Amelia in our prayers this morning for her health. We'd also like to pray for the uh, Led Miralt family at the death of Maria. Maria is the mother of Jason, and Jason is a co-worker of Diane Carey. So we'll be keeping that family in our prayers today. I'll also be praying for Deb Esla and her husband, Phil. Uh, Phil is a, a colleague of mine, fellow pastor, um, former pastor of the Floyds in Ohio, uh, and Deb is, is struggling with a lot of health concerns, so we'll be keeping Del and Deb and Pastor Phil and their family. Also, a prayer of Thanksgiving today. Uh, Sharon Berg had her uh, open heart surgery on Friday. Uh, they able to repair uh, her valve, and so she's recovering well, and we'll pray, uh, continue to pray for Sharon, and thanksgiving to God for that surgery and the healing that's coming. We bring all of those things and all of the matters of our heart to our Lord and Savior today in our prayers. O oh Lord, we are your people, chosen by your grace to be your own possession and granted mercy upon mercy. Hear your people who cry to you in need, and remember us according to the favor you have shown to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray this day that the Lord may open our hearts to prayer and guide us in this holy conversation so that we may know those things for which we ought to pray and seek them according to his grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord may grant to us good and faithful pastors to preach and teach the whole counsel of his word. And that we may receive their words with joy and thanksgiving. That the good news of Jesus Christ would go forth unhindered. And that the spirit may bring many into the fellowship of the redeemed. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may remember our baptism into Christ and live boldly in our vocation as his children, no matter the difficulties of this fallen world, within our families, in our neighborhoods, and throughout the world, knowing that for those who love God, all things work together for good. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord may bless our nation and those who govern us, that there would be unity and peace among all people of our nation, and that we may use the gift of freedom to live holy and upright and godly lives to the praise and honor of his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. That God's people may recognize the true treasure of the cross and rejoice in the resurrection, pursuing with all their hearts, minds, bodies, and souls the things of his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. That the sick may be healed, the trouble granted peace, the grieving comforted, and the dying kept in peace. Especially we pray this day for Sharon, for Deb and her family, for Abigail and David and Mrs. Wong, for Amelia and Annetta and Paul and Tom, for Debbie and Bruce and Jill, for Tom and Clarice and Tommy, for Carolyn and Sonny and Bonnie Walker's daughter and her family, for Betty and Ruth Ann and Devin, and for the Ladmeralt family at the death of Maria. For all of these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy.
that the Lord may grant us generous hearts so that we may honor him with the worship of our hearts and bring to him the tithes and offerings that support his work here in our church family, including our preschool, our central food ministry, and all the ministries of our church. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may be steadfast and immovable, abiding in Christ and in his word of truth, that we would be kept from error and delivered from temptation, and that the Lord may watch over our comings and goings and deliver us safely into the arms of his mercy and the blessed rest of the faithful to receive with all the dead in Christ the gift of life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord. Holy God, my God, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. Hear the prayers of your people who cry to you in their need and who plead to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We join together in singing, You Are My All in All. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, I give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb In my cross, my shame rising again. I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my 